What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Barmine Tech, and today we have a pretty exciting update from Proxmox. So Proxmox version 9.1 was released. We got some huge updates that were a part of it, so today we're going to go over some of the new updates, what they do, and what it means for us in the Proxmox community. Let's go over to what they added in this update and talk about it a little bit more over there. So as always, we have a couple of articles that they have, so they have like the official press release, and then they have the what's new in Proxmox post. So both of them are going to have all the information. This one's going to have a little bit more information. This one's going to have a video explaining it all. I'll link both of these down below, but pretty much the big ones to hit on is right now that they're adding capabilities to actually run Docker containers in Proxmox now. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more. So pretty much you can pull containers now from the OCI or Open Container Initiative. So this means stuff like Docker containers. You could pull straight from Docker Hub now and run them on your Proxmox host. Or you can upload them locally if you do have them saved on your network or somewhere. You could upload Docker containers or OCI images to your Proxmox host now and run them through there. Another big update is nested virtualization for VM guests. Pretty much meaning that you can virtualize a hypervisor now in Proxmox. So you're going to have better support for that. We came over and we got some Intel TDX, which is Intel Trusted Domain. And pretty much means that we can separate our VMs from the host further on the CPU side. So we could actually kind of build a wall and keep the virtual machine CPU separate from the host. This is a little bit further into the whole virtualization process than most of us will probably touch, but nice update to see. They added data center bulk actions. So now from the data center view, you can bulk shut down virtual machines, containers, nodes, all the actions now can be done from the data center. Next, we have support for TPM state in QCOW2 format. So this is gonna tie back into pretty much Windows machines. If you're running the encryption with BitLock or the TPM states, you can now actually save the TPM information in the, the QCOW2 file and it will help when you do like backups and migrating VMs and stuff like that. This is a little bit more niche towards Windows machines and like I said, we're going to talk about all this a little bit more later on. And then we also have a status report for the SDN stack. This is a little bit more if you're going to be using the SDN and more specific networking in the Proxmox side. If you're just somebody who's using Proxmox to virtualize and not really need all the specific network settings in the software side, this probably won't impact you too much, but we have a better report now. And finally, we have the Debian 13 Trixies now being used, which they introduced when we came to 9, but now we just have a newer version of the kernel. If we come over here, we can get into the roadmap. And if you click down to nine, you can kind of have a better idea. One thing they left out on that page that I'm really surprised about, and if we scroll down a little bit, they're working on PCI pass-through. Now, this was huge the other day when people were talking about it because they're trying to make it now that you can pass through the GPU through the web GUI instead of having to do it through the CLI. I've only done it a handful of times, and I do have a video in here where we talk about GPU pass-through, but it is a hassle, and everybody would always comment, you're using this old guide from years ago. How come there's not a newer one? How come you don't make a new one? Because the old one worked, and it was designed to actually work for what was needed for Proxmox. In the past, passing through a GPU or some of the other PCI cards was very challenging because of how Proxmox worked. And they're finally working to kind of get the drivers and all the other needed parts in place. So you'll easily be able to pass through a GPU and other PCI cards. This is a huge win because now you can easily pass through these cards. Whether you need additional networking cards or GPUs to run certain projects, you could do so much easier now. So over here is going to be a huge section to keep an eye out in the future updates. And this is awesome to see coming in Proxmox 9.1. Of course, there's way more things in the roadmap currently, and I'm, I'm not going to read through them all, but if you do, you can take a look at this page. I just kind of want to hit on some of the big points right now. So, so one of the big ones I want to talk about is being able to import Docker containers now into Proxmox. So let's do that a little bit. So I just came over here to Docker Hub, and this was always a container that I had on my actual Docker host that we were never able to bring into Proxmox because they never brought it over. If you're not familiar, this is the WireGuard server. It's the WG Easy one. This was the easiest WireGuard setup we've ever had. I know the helper scripts kind of, you know, had their own and then it didn't work right. And then it was just super complicated. This was one that worked super simply. And right now we're gonna try to pull this over into Proxmox and see how this works. So the first thing we need to do is come over here and we just need to copy this tag over here. So you might have some like in the example video, they use Grafana because it's just Grafana, Grafana, but you can just copy this. We need both of them before the slash and after the slash. If we come over to Big Lab, where we're working in here again, and I come over to my disk where my CT templates can be stored. And you can see over here now we have the pull from OCI registry button. We can click this. 
I would paste that in and now we're going to query tags. Now it's going to come over and give us all the latest tags available. We're just going to come over here and the most recent is seven nightly. So I'm just going to come over here and select that one. And if I need to make any changes, we can. I don't think we need to. So I think we're all good to download. Now, the thing with these containers right now is that it's running a Docker image inside an actual LXC container. So I've been doing a little research into it. It's a very mixed opinions. It's not like we're actually running a Docker container. What Proxmox is doing is making an LXC container and putting that Docker container inside of it. It's kind of doing some nested virtualization again. So it's good, but it's not. And I've seen some people talk about like updating. It really doesn't work right and all this stuff. So it's still in early stages, so it's not going to be perfect, but it is a win in my eyes to start off with. So we can see this download now. So if I come over to create container, I can make a quick container. I can call it WG easy. We can click next. And now you can see over here, I have that file. We just download and click next again. I'm pretty much going to leave this with the defaults. And I'm going to put this on DHCP. An another feature I forgot to mention was they enhanced the DHCP for the LXC containers. It hasn't been really too big of an issue lately, but if you were using LXC containers on like version 8 or earlier, there were some times where DHCP just wouldn't work. You would have to, you know, blow out a container and install it again several times to get DHCP working properly, or you would have to mess with it in the command line because for some reason the LXCs just wouldn't pull DHCP properly. This was another thing they put in this update, but we can just click next. I'm fine using the host sends for DNS, and then we can click finish. And now over here, you can see that it is coming through and using that OCI image to create it, and we're all good. So that WG easy. Now, if you've used Docker in the past, you know that there's environmental variables, and we can still use those here. If we come over to options, here's environment. So we can add, we can delete, we can change them as we need, and we're all good. So ideally, I should be able to start this container up and have WG easy run now. And we already have an error. Looks like it was just probably still finished in the initialization because it looks like it's starting up now. Uh, once this loads up, we can go in there and take a look, but we can come over here and we can pull another container. So, I mean, the one that everybody's been using is Grafana. I can come over here to Grafana. Now, I've never used Grafana, but everybody seems to be using this in their examples. And we can come back over here. We can pull from OCI. I can query it. And you see there is a ton of tags available. I don't know what the latest one is. I bet there is just latest and we can just type this actually and it'll grab it that way. So I can download it here. Again, it'll just download the file. I'm not too sure what's going on with this container, but we can come over here and we can create the Grafana one. So I can just call this Grafana. I can assign it a password. We could do that. We could set it up. Should be all good. I'll give it the DHCP once again. And then if we can click finish, we should be able to build this out. And then in a second, we'll get this started up. So I think something's just broken with that WireGuard container. So I deleted it. But over here, you can see Grafana started up. It must have the QEM tools already running or however it does it. And you see I already have an IP. So if I come over to 192.168.52.30, pretty sure Grafana is... 3000. Yep, and here we are at Grafana. So this is now running as a Docker container out of Proxmox. Now, one thing that I did see is if I control C it, it kills the Docker container. And I think if I refresh this, yes, yeah, so and now the Docker container is not going to uh, work. So this was something that I saw. So like you would have to come over and see like I just killed the whole container. Um, so this is like one of the kind of hiccups right now because of how it's running. I don't know if they're going to change this in the future. I guess we'll see. But this is one of like the shortcomings of how they're running it currently. Now another big question is going to be updating these OCI images or Docker images or however you like to refer to them. And I don't know how exactly it's going to work yet. There's some people on the forums mentioning that to do this, you're going to have to kind of like add new mount points and variables and all this stuff to me that doesn't really sound worth it it kind of circles back to the idea of docker should just get blown out and restarted now this is where the kind of annoyance comes from if you're somebody who has like a big config maybe you have a specific docker container that you currently run that you don't want to lose the config for so i guess we'll see going forward like what they're going to do so we don't have to pretty much do all this work to update these docker images or oci images as we go forward but that's how we can use like oci or docker images now in proxbox one other thing i wanted to hit on was the bulk actions from the data center so you can see over here i'm on the data center and i could actually bulk shut down everything's off so it doesn't show anything but if i could do bulk start 
I can turn on Grafana from the data center. And there you can see it's starting it through here. All good, and it's starting Grafana back up. So that was just another one of these features that were added in the update. Like I mentioned, a lot of the other ones are kind of out of reach for the typical home lab user, I feel. I don't think the majority of us are going to be running an SDN in our house. If you are, then you got some new features added on for reporting and fabric and stuff like that. If you're somebody who's looking to virtualize a hypervisor inside of Proxmox, you got a couple of new updates for that. We had the Intel TDX and the TPM and QCOW2 added on, which good updates. It's going to be helpful going forward, but it's not really targeted towards the regular home lab user. For the most part, if you do have a Windows machine, probably aren't running BitLocker on it in your home lab or just for regular use but if you are now you have where you can migrate and update without breaking it there were a few more topics but i wanted to cover the big ones today especially the gpu pass through hopefully coming sometime in the future the new addition of these pci updates and driver capabilities is really exciting and hopefully soon it'll be much easier to use gpus on proxmox so this was about the update for proxmox 9.1 it was released the other day if you are looking to update it you can do it straight through the update button on your proxmox gui it's not like a pve 8 to 9 or 9 to 9 1 update it's just simply done through the updates tab. I'll link the sites below for the roadmap and the update release notes if you want to check those out. I'll also have links to all the gear in my home lab down below if you want to check any of that out. And I'll have a link to the Discord if you want to join up and chat over there. As always, I want to thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as my buddy Don would say, hack till it hurts.